What is up, guys? This is the Kentucky Post Game Show. I'm Fletch. This is Mario, and that's Mike. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Uh, we're gonna get into some details here soon, but we really do appreciate everybody uh, joining in and watching throughout the season. So Kentucky, Kentucky gets knocked out in the first round to Oakland. Uh, score was 80 to 76. Uh, we weren't expecting that. It messed up our brackets a little bit. We definitely weren't expecting that, man. Um, one of the best teams to watch in in the country. Uh, you got the excitement that the team brought, and then you know they get knocked out in the first round. Not not only in the SEC tournament, but the March Madness as well. You could tell that we had more freshmen on the court. They were they were scared. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Let's uh, yeah, uh, UK fans were not happy. So um, we pulled up some tweets. We're gonna go through some tweets, tweets and, and comments. some comments. Yeah, and some comments on Instagram. Let's uh, let's go through those. So first one, Calipari needs to be fired. Okay. John Calipari equals Doc Rivers. Uh, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a funny one. All right. <laughs> Comments, man. They, 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 as soon as the game gets over, they go straight to the comments. I know, I know. That's that's the best part. Is like after the game, going straight to Twitter. <laughs> um, Kentucky better get me an NIL deal after the stuff they just did to my bracket. <laughs> so obviously, I'm, a lot of brackets. I'm going to venture to say that I don't think any of these tweets are positive. Personally. No, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, say that. yeah, yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah they're they're getting uh, they're, they're, they're angry. Positive. They are angry. All right, next one. March Madness is great because Kentucky has a few future NBA players on their team, and they're getting cooked by a future <laughs> enterprise district manager. Uh, Jack Jack Golke. He I, definitely cooked us. Dude, he dominated. Did you guys see the one where they said that he was a uh, insurance? They said that he was going to be like an insurance agent or something like that. I, I, I saw a comment online. I did. It was like an accountant. Yeah, I mean, accountant. It was like, it was like him against somebody. It was like his. I mean, I'm not trying to upset anybody, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if you seen him at the local Chevron down there in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> they always say what they say. They said there's always one local, or there's like always one dude who gets hot in March Madness who's and like we, a future we, accountant. Yeah, and we match up with him every round <laughs> one is what it is. Uh, next one, Kentucky basketball is just the Dallas Cowboys in disguise. I did see a lot of people say that. The college just beat oh God, us. Oh, God. Need a new oh coach. God. Come on. Come on. What do you think about that, Mike? You would think they would – uh. Uh, turn the comments off when they post. When they post, you know, on Instagram, you think they the the Kentucky basketball program would at least at least turn the comments off. You know, you know the UK fans are coming for you. I think they're turn leaving them on so Mitch <laughs> can get a grasp. Barnhart, that is. Sing cow to Ukraine. Comedy. I think that's too close. <laughs> <laughs> John Calipari, John Calipari, get ready to learn SEC Network analyst, buddy. <laughs> Dude, some of these are crazy. <laughs> some of these are just crazy, man. That is pretty all, you know, you watch the game uh, against Oakland. Obviously, we were chosen to win that game. What happened versus Oakland? Why did Kentucky lose? I'll go first on this one because I know you – you have your, your strong beliefs, Mike. Um, but I'm going to go with, uh, they just, you know, they looked tight. They looked, you know, the players didn't look, you know, I don't want to say confident, but they looked like they were a little bit tight, not loose, you know, uh, stressed a little bit, a little tense. Um, and I think that definitely had a play in, in you know, what happened in that game. Um, Golki, you, you got to be able to make stops in, in, in the March Madness. We talked about it all season, mm -hmm. you know, first, uh, our first you know, matchup was against a, a, a three-point specialist, and, you know, we weren't able to get stops when we needed. Now, they did – there there's some times where he was making just some tough shots. You got to give the respect yeah. to, to him. Um, so I'm not going to put the full blame on, on them not playing defense. There was times. But when a team like that, you see a guy like that uh, start to heat up. He hits one. He hits the second one. Um, I, I'm a little bit confused because I was like – it, it felt like Kentucky just wasn't prepared as much. You know, the, uh, in the second half, it looks like they started to make a little bit more adjustments to him. But why not make those adjustments um, first when you start out the first game? You know, don't even let him get hot. You know, get, mm -hmm. he's the type of guy you want to make him put the ball on the floor and, and make him be able to uh, drive. He only, uh, I believe he only shot, what, two? He only, he only below, attempted eight two-pointers the whole season. The whole season. So he's just a guy who just lives on the three. So, 
you know, I was kind of confused. It just looked like they weren't prepared as much, you know, com- you know, uh, for for Oakland. And I think a lot of that has to do with just focusing in the moment. Maybe Kentucky just came out there and thought that it was going to be an easy fluke. And they they're, they're such a dominant team that can score with the best of them. They think that they can just run through one team and and you know you know look at the next game. If we, let's worry about the three, four, five other games after this. So uh, I think it just comes down to you know not being prepared. And like I said, they, they a lot of the players in Kentucky they just look tense. They look yeah. tense. And Oakland Oakland before this game did say I think their coach said that this was the, probably the best matchup they could ask for. You know, coming into the picking tournament, on, picking on little freshmen. Yeah, and and they even asked uh, Rob about that, and Rob was just like, "I'm just here to play basketball." I, I think that's what is. I think that's what. He said, I responded to that, you know, but Oakland definitely was like, hey, we wanted Kentucky and and um, they they backed that up. Yeah. So. Uh, I believe that we could have matched up with any other 14 seed in the tournament. And we would have won. I cold heartedly believe that because we wouldn't run it. So two years ago, we were, we ran into Doug Edert, St. Peter's, mm. tore us up. I'm not going to say that that was a one person show, but he he pretty much lit it up. Uh, this Jack Golkey guy wasn't even on my radar. Just know that as a team, they could shoot the ball extremely well. Uh, but seven out of the ten that he made was contested. Yeah. But the problem is here, uh, he shoots 23s in the game. Most teams don't even shoot 23s in a game. And he attempted 20 and shot 50%. As a Hall of Fame coach, you can't – Stop that! Once he makes seven in the first half, it's it's too late. It's too late. He's in his he's in his yeah, rhythm. He's in his rhythm. I think. Uh, yeah, not to cut you off, but we saw it against NC State. You know, he didn't look like you know no. he wasn't as hot as he was no. in, in, versus Kentucky. I think a part of that had to yeah. do with him just getting hot. Mm-hmm. And then uh, let, let's go with the fact that you know last episode for the matchup, I uh, I highlighted Trey Townsend. Uh, that that's who that's who they go through other than a, a fire hot Jack uh, Golke. Trey Townsend's a great player for for a mid major. Uh, in the second half, he tore us up. And and what really frustrates me is we have five star seven footers that we could not wait to get back healthy, and they got destroyed by a mid major six nine post guy. And it just infuriated me. Like we literally looked like we played Parks and Rec ball. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I get it. I, I totally get it, man. And I think it's a lot of fans, you know, they might blame Cal for this one. They, you know, might be blame the players. I, I just think, you know, like I said, they were tense. Um, uh, You know, basketball is more than just X's and O's. That's what a lot of people should understand. There's a lot of mental that goes into it. And I, I think, you know, the mental state, you know, for the players, they just you weren't as as capable as, as, as it should be. Um, We've seen a lot of times where Kentucky's the underdogs where we go in the games they they look a lot better as underdogs. Man, you know, we did. saw what they did against Auburn and the type of team that they did, and, and the, t- the game versus at Tennessee where we didn't expect them to win. We saw what type of team they were then. Um, you know, I think it's it has a lot to do with the mental state. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And and you know, on that, what does Kentucky need to do? You know, what does Kentucky need to do for change? Fire Calipari. Uh. That that's for one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm I'm furious. Uh, you you just mentioned X's and O's. That's what the university is missing. We're missing X's and O's. He can recruit. We got the freshman of the year on our team, and he played not like that. Uh, what needs to change? He needs to come back, and a couple other players need to come back. But uh, time about reach up. Yeah, uh, freshman of the year. The entire. College basketball realm. He was freshman of the year. He had three points. I'm pretty sure he had three. Did he have three? Oh, yeah, he did. Uh, couldn't get nothing going. You could look and you could understand that he was not prepared against Oakland Golden Grizzlies. For <laughs> some, I mean, I. You go ahead, Mario. And I was, I was just gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. I, I know, hey, fans are gonna get at me, and I'm, I, I, I'm prepared. This is my opinion. I, I think it just needs a little bit of tweak. We gotta, we gotta get something tweaked. Uh, I gotta go with the roster cre- reconstruction. You gotta be able to. The Cal has to change the way he constructs his wa- rosters. It's, yes, you want to have all these freshmen, and you want to win. It may have worked back in 2012, but we saw, you know, it, it's not necessarily gonna work now. There's a lot of, to do with the transfer portals. Um, and, and players moving around here and there. Uh, I say he needs to reconstruct his roster. 
reconstruct his schemes, the way he plays. We saw him make a tweak a few years ago in play styles. We're seeing him play, you know, a little bit different than he used to play back in the, the early 2010s 20, 20, uh, and 20, 2011, 2012, around that range. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it, I, I think – not to not to cut you off. I think he just Cal needs to change his approach to how he wants to construct his roster, the way he wants to look at the game, and he has to decide: does he want to be, I hate to say, a, a father figure to these guys, or does he want to be able to to, to be a winning program? Mm-hmm. And, and I know Cal. I'm strong that Cal is the uh, Cal that I know that that you know has so much success from his UMass days um, and early Kentucky days. Winning was the priority. Now I I don't know if that's the priority right now as far as what it looks like it oh. it looks the priority looks like he just wants to to help the kids you know get to the next level and change lives and maybe that's that's his thing but like I said I know something has to change and it, it has to it has to be changed very fast. Well I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuttal on that. Uh, he said on national television that it's gonna be hard for him to change the way he's been doing things because he helps so many kids. These kids that we're getting are five-star athletes. They can do that at South Florida. They could do that at Duke. They could do it at Tennessee or Georgetown College. They're five stars. They're going to be on national television. They don't need Coach Cal's help. You know, I'm worried about the fans. You know, if he comes back, listen, if he comes back, we're going to see 24,000 no more. Uh, all these people that are upset – at Mitch, because I don't think he's done at Kentucky, guys. I hate to break it to you, but uh, this this is about winning games. University of Kentucky is about winning games and hanging up banners. We've won one tournament game since 2019, two postseason games entirely, and we just let go of Kyra Elsie on the women's side. <laughs> Something's got to change on the men's, too, because this is not – the University of Kentucky is a fluke right now. It's all about getting guys to the league, right? What's that do for us? Doesn't make my pockets any fatter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you bring up, you bring up Mitch Barnhart. Um, I think he's a competitor. I think he's a great guy, but he also wants to win. You know, you can see him getting riled up in the basketball games and the football games. I mean, has Coach Calipari coached his last game at Kentucky? No. It de- but it, it de- go go ahead. Mario. It depends on what the program wants. So, so if the program wants, if they if they want to, you know, uh, if they're for the fans and you know they want to win, you got to do what you got to do, right? But you got to it's two sides of it. You got to think about Cal Perry and where he's coming from. Do you want to be an NBA factory where you're getting guys come in and out and you know you know going to the NBA draft and winning is winning is something like a you know if we win we win if we don't it's okay you know we're gonna try our very best or do you want to go through the fans? Do you want to, you know, follow the fans? Do you? I'll tell you this. I, I know one thing for sure. I know that no coach, no person, no player is bigger than Kentucky basketball tradition. Let me just say that. So I, whatever Mitch does, whatever he wants to do, you know, it's all in his hands, but he has to think about, you know. He's got it, the hardest decision. It's a very hard decision. It's a very hard decision because yeah. it's the the bond between the coach and the and the fans, are, it's broken. There's no bond there. There's He's no getting lost. back. There's no getting he's, back. He's definitely lost that, and yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you kind of give your opinion on that. Well, I've already started out. Uh, my blood pressure's running high already. Um, Need to take a break? No, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to dissect how I'm going to explain this further. Um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, Coach Cal said that his goal is to have all starting NBA All Star teams to be Kentucky Wildcats. If that's the if that's the case, why don't you coach the NBA All Star Game and go take yourself back to the NBA, buddy? <laughs> I mean, this is Kentucky. Your season tickets at the University of Kentucky is costing people thousands of dollars. This is just Ken- to- this is Kentucky, but Cal is probably the I, I give you this. Cal is the only one that can coach besides Patino. There's no other coach that can coach here. Now, I don't I don't think they can fit the 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 of what Kentucky the pressure that Kentucky brings to them. I have to say, Cal has to stay. Um, or Patino. Patino, I, those are the only two guys that I think that, that could ever coach there, that well, I could coach here in Kentucky. I'm pretty sure we got a segment of replacements. I've got a slew of them. <laughs> uh, let's go with, uh, you know, I'm just – he brings up the NBA so much that this is the greatest tradition in college basketball, and now that is – that's debatable. I mean, I know Kansas just got beat, 
But what they won a they won a championship two years ago. We haven't won one in it's twelve hard, years. It's hard, Mike. It's, it's hard. It's hard it's, to win. It's man. hard. But if you look at the Elite Eight matchups, he's got more than two. Uh, he's got two more than Calipari uh, since our last uh, championship. In twelve years, he's got two more Elite Eight appearances. Uh, same Final Fours. Uh, one more national championship. I don't, uh, I don't and he, want to. There's nobody in the country that's doing less with more than John Calipari. I don't think he needs to go, though. I don't think he needs to go. I, 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 think, paying, like I, said, I think he needs to just change his scheme. I, th- I think, you know, um, yeah, recruiting helps, but he, Cal needs to prioritize winning at the top. Beside, put everything else below. Don't, don't worry about, you know, changing lives and all that good stuff. That's good. That comes with it. But he needs to put winning at the top. That, that's my vote. That's, that's what I think. He needs to put winning at the top, but if – if it's broke, you can't fix a broken record. Calipari's been this way for 15 years, and it worked early, but college basketball has adapted to NIL, and, and we're getting beat by 24-year-olds. If he, if he understands the problem and he's not fixing it, you cannot fix John Calipari. It's time for him to go. I disagree. I think, I think Cal, he's won the pass. He's won at UMass. He, he's, he's a champion. He knows what it takes. He's been coaching for 30 years now, I believe, for his full career. Just change the change the scheme. Change the scheme. Go back to 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 what he used to do back in his days. Uh, maybe he's getting old. I don't know. Like what the case may be. I just I don't think there's any other coach to, that fits the job that can pl- that can coach for Kentucky. You see you see what it brings. Mm-hmm. You see what it comes with. I agree that we have the craziest fan base. <laughs> but just like you said, when he signed back in two thousand nine, you don't stop with one banner. I mean, honestly, like I'm great. I'm grateful for the first ten years. Let's go ten years. I'm grateful for what he's done, but the last five, like we mentioned in previous episodes, it's unexcusable. You you can't, you cannot be the University of Kentucky men's basketball head coach, making ten million a year, and and win one postseason NCAA tournament game. St. Peter's has more in one run. Than we've had in five years being a two, three, and four seed or six seed. So, I mean, yeah, and you already brought up, you know, going into replacements. Who do you think would be a good replacement for him? I don't think there, I don't think there should be a replacement. I, I, I'll let you go. Well, you you could elaborate a little bit more on that. I was just say I, I I elaborated on it all all <laughs> since we started, man. I, I just don't think no one else is fit for the job besides Cal and Patino. Those are guys. Tino would be nice. I'd be cool to see him come back. But like I said, Cal, Cal, man, he, you, you get a lot with Cal. You get the recruitment. You get the players. You get the stars. Um, he's won before on the level, and he knows what it takes. He just like I said, I think he just has to do a few tweaks in so terms what char- of his mindset. What characteristics do you like? You there got to be checkpoints when you're when you're filling out this audition. There's got to be checkpoints. Yep. So what what is your characteristics that needs to be like fixed? F- well, well, filled. Like you're saying, there's nobody else than Cal, but maybe Patino. What characteristics? So before I give my list, I'll explain why. But I need to know what you think is the characteristics to be the UK, UK men's basketball. I, I just think his persona fits Kentucky. You know, I, I think at times Cal digs his own grave. We we saw he he definitely does that. So that, that's something that he can really work on. He he's done it all season. If you, you look back on the comments that every presser or you know the big whatever presser he has. You know he'll he'll say, "Hey, well, we're gonna wait till March." He definitely digged his own grave on this. So yeah. <laughs> he Five says, years. "Yes, we'll wait till March." He's not in, you know, he's not invested in the SEC tournament. It's not important as important to him as it is. And then he goes and loses his first game. Yeah. So yeah, he definitely digs his own grave. Grave, but persona wise, the, and, and the, the, the his recruitment, being able to connect with the players, you know, being that father figure to the players, or you know, changing a lot of these players' lives. Um, and preparing them for the next level. Um, I, I definitely – I don't think there's a lot of coaches that can do that at his level um, go, go in, in entire college basketball. Besides Patino, obviously Patino, we, we know what he, he brings. But like I said, I think Cal just needs to switch his mindset into winning first. It's all about winning. And maybe it is like that, but I, I, we don't really know if his mindset is like that. But you got to prioritize that, especially when you're, you're coaching for a Kentucky basketball program. Yeah, you gotta assume. I mean, he's done a lot. He's done a lot for the community. You can't you can't disagree with that. But when it comes to games and when it comes to actually winning and you know being the University of Kentucky basketball, yep. that's a different story. BBN does not give a you know what about <laughs> what he's done for the community or these kids because, like I said earlier, we only get five stars. Like 
we know that. Duke, Carolina, Kansas, we're, we're the elite of the elite. They don't need no help. They just do their thing on the basketball court, and their their game will do the rest. So why are they going to keep Coach Cow around? Oh, uh, maybe because it has to do with a $33.4 million buyout that Mitch does not want to pay. Well, look at Jimbo Fisher and A&M. Yeah, so they do the same let, thing. And let, me, let me get with that. Uh, my thing is – if you know, we can agree that it, let's just say hypothetically he is fired, he's let go. Who in their right minds doesn't think Calipari will get another head coaching job? Nobody, he's nobody. Yeah, he's so, with that being said, if he gets into another contract, he can be like our buyout would be less because they would have to pick up a contract. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I'm fine with that. But with with the replacements, I have a couple that I think are no brainers. Okay. Uh, Scott Drew, him and Mitch Barnhart's really close. Uh, Scott Drew knows how to win. He's won a national championship. He's won conference tournaments. He's getting five-star athletes at Baylor, which is not even the largest university in that state. Uh, you've got Dan Hurley, which is now coaching the hottest program in the country. I think UConn is the hottest program in the country. Uh, and, and he's got he's – got, you talk about that persona. That man's – he might be like strutting while he's walking now because they're the team to beat. That used to be us in two thousand, you know, early two thousands. No more, right? Nobody's mm -hmm. scared to play us. Everybody's scared to play UConn. Uh, I've got Bruce Pearl. Uh, we can cross that one out after they got beat by an Ivy League school. Well, let me <laughs> let me ask you this. So so you, you get a replacement for Cal, and the replacement comes. Do you got do, do fans honestly think that you know as soon as this replacement comes that they're going to start winning? No, no, that is absolutely, absolutely not. not. It's, you're looking at five, six, maybe seven years of, of just rebuilding, trying to rebuild that brand. Depends. You're going to lose recruiting. You're going to you're going to lose recruiting and what it does. And I don't I don't know what that does in the transfer portal if players want to play for for a different coach or whatever the case may be. I just say it's you're not like it depends on who you gonna, get, Mario. It depends on who you get. So if you get a Scott Drew or a Dan Hurley, we've got the money to pay anybody. Other than Coach K out of retirement, Jay Wright, and Billy Donovan, uh, Brad Stevens, I've heard these names for years. They're unrealistic. It's not going to happen. But if you go get a Scott Drew or a Dan Hurley that is X's and O's, what you said, you know, it's got to be more X's and O's, we don't necessarily have to get these five-star freshmen. Look at Tennessee. They're in the Sweet 16. What do they have, two freshmen that they play? Everybody else is transferred. Dalton Connect. You're telling me that one not, of these the, I don't think it's the fresh. I don't. We've won. We've lost without freshmen. Saver Wheeler, Oscar Shibwe, uh, that team with uh, uh, Kellen Grady. We lost first round. That team we had maybe two or three freshmen. Exactly. Uh, uh, Tata Washington, I think, and uh, I don't remember who else was the the second freshman. CJ, not, not, not that year. I don't know who was the if it was Chris Livingston or. No, it wasn't Chris Livingston, but it was Ty Ty Washington. But that squad, go back to what I'm saying. That squad, they even we we were loaded with veterans, and we still lost first round. So I, I don't, like I said, I, I don't. I appreciate you bringing that up, Mario, because <laughs> that is exactly what I'm talking about. X's and O's. Cal can get these guys, but he's not an X's and O's. So if we lose these recruits, which keep them on, it's going to happen. If Cal does go, you're going to see a lot of decommitments, and which, which that's fine. That's understandable. But at the end of the day. That opens the door for a lot of players that are still elite at other programs that would give a chance that Cal would not look at would come to play for Scott Drew or Dan Hurley or or Bruce Pearl or whoever we get. They'd be like, oh, well, Cal never would look my way this mm -hmm. year, but now that he's gone, my dream is to play at Kentucky, but he might give me a chance. Mm. So as long as we got somebody that could do X's and O's, I'm confident that we've got the money. Uh We've got the university and the fan base. We're, we're behind. Everybody is behind getting Cal out of here. If somebody had a bulldozer and, and pushed the dirt, you're saying Coach Cal's digging the grave, right? <laughs> they're, pushing, they're pushing the dirt right now. I'm, I'm just – I'm being honest, man. If Cal, just, goes, if Cal goes to another school and he brings his recruits and they win within two years, and we lose, we get a new coach, we're still losing, Cal wins out of a different program, how would you feel? Oh, he'll he'll win. He'll win games in the regular season. He'll probably get beat in the first round or wherever school he goes to because he can't coach. <laughs> I'm just I'm, – I'm done, man. Tommy Lloyd, by the way, I didn't finish it. Tommy Lloyd is my number one option in my opinion. He's young. He's coached under Hall of Famers. He's doing it at Arizona. I feel like if you could do it at Arizona, you could do it at Kentucky. 
because they're an elite program in itself. Nah, uh, nah Kentucky's different. And then a, a then a uh, a young and up and coming coach, Amir Abdur Rahim, uh, coached at Kennesaw State. That program was terrible, terrible. Won won four games in two years. His first two seasons, third year wins the conference, makes an NCAA tournament bid, and then he takes his first year at South Florida, goes twenty five and seven, uh, winning the regular season title first time in. Uh, school history at South Florida. He's 43 years old, guys. He's my diamond in the rough. Mm-mm. Yeah, the dom- the, that, no. That's your diamond in the rough? <laughs> yeah, that dude. Well, I'm just saying that nobody really knows who that is. But I'm, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. That's what I'm saying. And he's young, guys. You know what I'm saying? You either go two approaches here. We're Kentucky. You get the elite Hall of Famers in the making, or you go get a diamond in the rough. Hopefully it works out. Y'all got anything else to say about Coach Cal? I said what I said. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the players. Um, obviously, looking at the NBA draft, and we'd already touched on a little bit of this, who should stay, who should go, you know, who stay, who actually stays and who actually goes? Uh, who would I like to stay? I would like, I would like to see Reed Shepard back in the Kentucky Wildcats mm-hmm. jersey. Um, These are know. realistic answers, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, I was yeah, gonna say who actually stays and who actually goes. I, I, th- I would I prefer Reed to stay, but he may not you know, just because of the draft projection and, you know, the opportunity that it presents. Um, but if, if I had one guy to pick, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm for Jordan Burks. I would like to see him return. Um, I, if we get Reed Shepard, it'd be special. It'd be definitely special. Just his story in general, you know, uh, grew up in Kentucky, you know, parents played for Kentucky. Um, and, you know, the, 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 Great start to the season. Yeah, had a great season, but, you know, fell short a little bit early. I just feel like he's not done yet. You know, as, as mm-hmm. far as, you know, the, the, the story's not finished yet in, in terms of Reed Shepard. And yeah. hopefully, you know, fans, we could, you know, that'd be a positive note, getting Reed Shepard back. Maybe you, you buy the fan fit, fan base back a little bit um, when you bring him back. But like I said, you know, uh, who goes, I, I think we're going to leave. We're going to lose a lot more than who's going to come back. Uh, mm-hmm. Rob Dillingham. I don't, I don't see him coming back. I, no. I think he played his last game in the Kentucky Wildcats uniform. Uh, DJ Wagner, I, I'd like to see him come back as well. That'd be a he nice. He needs. He needs another year. He it, does. That'd be a nice, you know, addition to next year's team. But we got to think we got we got a lot of recruits uh, as far as guards coming in. Travis Perry, uh, Boogie Flan, those guys are coming in. I, I maybe see one more guard room Transfer for one more portal. guard, maybe in the portal, or maybe have someone come back from last year's team, but. Like I said, if I had to pick, you know, I, I'm probably going with Reed Shepard coming back, and everybody else is probably going to be, you know, um, going to the NBA. Oh, uh, hypothetically, if Cal comes back, uh, I think that's our only chance to get people back on the on the team. I think, unless we just get some superstar coach, uh, I think Reed Shepard. Go back to the Tennessee game, projected number one overall pick, you know. To me, he's he's a great player. He's a great player, guys. But what he what he put on the platform Thursday night, he's not ready. He's not ready. You could see it like he had a bunch of mishaps, like things that he does not do, and he done it on the biggest stage. You know, uh, had a chance to win the game. Tony Reeves in the corner, he threw it, he threw it to the bench. <laughs> I mean, you can't do that. Being you know considered the number one overall pick. Yeah, that means next year that the talent level, guards, this isn't a really big guard class. So the rebuttal to that is go. Go make your money. You know, Cal's going to push it. Hey, Reed, no, you want to come back. You know, I, you know, we want you to come back, but you need to go. Hopefully he comes back. Uh, I want Big Z. If we had any seven-footer to stay, give me Big Z all day. Uh, get about 15 pounds of muscle. We know he could shoot. He's he's skilled and athletic. Uh and give me Adu Thiero. Uh, I think those three, with what we got coming in, and I think DJ Wagner needs another year, but wouldn't be upset if he didn't come back. Uh, you give me Reed Shepard, Adu Thiero, and, and Big Z. Uh, I think I think we're going to lose a lot of players to the transfer portal, like the Jordan Burks. I think he's gone. Like he was already committed to Ole Miss. He would have started for Ole Miss this year, I think. Mm. Uh, just to play in time next year. We got five guys coming in. He's going to be booted back. Um, Aaron Bradshaw, I don't think, is an NBA player right now. I think he hits a transfer portal and goes somewhere and starts. Uh, Ugo, you could tell in his face, you could tell in his face when, you know, when Cal would switch up between Aaron and, and Ugo, he'd be upset. I think he wants to go and be a full-time starter. 
Um, and then obviously Rob, he's gone. He's he's probably the most NBA ready player we got. Yeah. So faces all that, man. I think players got to understand this is Kentucky. You know, you're not you ain't gonna play. You know, 20 minutes a game. Um. So you know, I, I, going off of what you said about um, uh, Reed Shepard, I get it. I get it. He didn't have the greatest game. Didn't play as well. Um. You know, uh, had some struggle in there. You know, I, I think a lot of it had to do, you know, playing zone, playing that zone they played against. You know, it was a little bit different for him to kind of navigate through. Um, but no, I can't, I can't put all the blame on him for 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 that game. And yeah, he didn't play his best game. We understand that. But they should still never, even if if him if he lo- played bad or not, they should have never lost that game because they're yeah. they're a way talented team, much more talented team than Oakland. Can't rely on just Reed Shepard and what he brings to the table. You got Antonio Reeves, who, who definitely showed up in that that matchup. But like I said, I just think, you know, that, that game had a lot to do with their mental, you know, and just not being all the way there. It looked like they weren't all the way there, and they were very tense. I'm just bringing up Reed Shepard because his game throughout the season has put him on that platform where he can't be considered just a two-year player. Like, you're projected the number one overall pick. You're better than what you performed. Yeah, it comes and that, that's – yeah, that that's just the only takeaway I get from that is we expected him to play. You know, Calipari said you know we had some players that didn't play the way that they usually that he play. expected. Yeah. You know, usually played. I mean, I agree with that. But then again, if you're projected a t- top ten pick, yeah. you still got to do better than what you've done. You know, you had more, you had as many turnovers as you had points, man. You can't. You got. He's got to come back a year. I think. I think one more year would do him justice and. And make it would, you know. I think the bridge is already burnt between the fans and Coach Cal. Yes, yeah, so but not. but maybe a band aid like a Hello Kitty band aid might help. be put on it if, if uh, Reed Shepard come back. So let's take a look at the twenty twenty five roster. Um, you know, let's say with our commits and everything like that, and like you were saying, maybe Coach Cal changes a philosophy or two. Um, what would you be the most excited for? Who would you be the most excited for and why? Um, I'm, I would say, you know, one of those, these great freshmen that we come in, that have coming in, and you know, Tra- Travis Perry looks very entertaining, uh, another secondary version of Reed Shepard maybe. I don't know. But, you know, I, I want to see what, what Kentucky does in the transfer portal. They haven't, <laughs> as far as what I've been seeing and I've heard, they haven't been doing much looking in the transfer portal as of yet. Um, and I think part of that has to do with, you know, um, the Cal, you know, if Cal stays, if he goes, that has a lot to do with it. But I want, I'm excited to see what they do in the transfer portal. Who are they going to bring in? What, what type of players are they going to bring in? And, and what's the roster construction? What, what will it look like for next season? Are you going to come back with something similar to this season with eight, where well, we had eight freshmen and two, uh, two sophomores and a uh, senior, uh, I guess two seniors as well. I, like, w- what is it going to look like for next season? Are you going to change the way the, the roster is constructed? You got six coming in. So what, what, what is, who are you going to fill with the rest of the team and what type of guys are you pulling from, from the transfer portal to, to, to make up the, the rest of the roster? I think I'm more excited about our bigs uh, coming in. Sa- uh, Cyril Santo. Uh, he's a, he's a man amongst boys. Uh, he he's just got like that demeanor that we had in Demarcus Cousins, like he will literally dunk and you know throw throw a kneecap and a rib or something. Like he's just I, I like the aggressive uh, aggressiveness approach. Uh, and then Jaden Acquaintance, I'm excited because I don't know if a lot of people know this, but we get him for two years. Uh, he's not at the age ability where you could play one year and then go to the league. Now keep in mind he could transfer, hmm. but I'm saying based on like. I'm excited that we can have a arguably a one and done for two years hmm. uh, because of his age. He's uh, he reclassified. He's 16. So by the time this year comes around in April, he'll be uh, 17. Hmm. So we should be able to have that big guy for two years. So that I'm just excited about the bigs. Uh, I don't I don't think Boogie Flange real athletic, but he could shoot well. Billy Richmond, he's a great defender. Reminds a lot of people of Michael Kidd Gilchrist, but. Uh, He's real long, you know, mm-hmm. so just hopefully we, you know, you hit it, you know, now on the head. Uh, hopefully we get some guys from other programs that could boost our age a little bit because uh, this could be a, a very big turnaround depending on if people leave, you know. Don't want it to be all freshmen again. So looking at the season – 
overall, like just everything from top to bottom, what was the biggest takeaway from this basketball season? Um, from, you, you get, you, you know, we lost with St. Peter's. Was it the year before, I believe? Yeah, two years ago. Oscar Shibuya squad. Um, and then, you know, fans are kind of iffy, you know, about, you know, what was coming in with Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham, you know, and Justin Edwards. I would say it's a lot of highs and lows within the season. You know, there's times where we felt like we actually had a chance. And, you know, maybe the Georgia we were gonna, game. Yeah, Big maybe. Z, the yeah, it felt good. Like Kentucky basketball felt like it was back at, at some point. And then, you know, to the later ends of the season, you know, you lose in the SEC tournament. You know the hope just starts to go down, and then this last this last loss in the March Madness tournament, you know, killed a lot of Kentucky fans. You know, it hurt because we just lost the year before yeah. in the first round. So, like I said, the big the biggest takeaway is just like we got we got to change something. Something has to be changed. Um, whether it's whether it's the coaching head coaching job or whether it's the style of play. I mean, something has to something definitely has to change in this aspect because you know it's not working. Whatever we're doing, it's not working, and it's not Kentucky basketball. That's not what we're, that's not what we're accustomed to. So, word on the street is uh, when he had gotten those two players uh, up east, uh, DJ Wagner and uh, Aaron Bradshaw, I, I believe. Uh, I think. I think there was some promises that was made, like Wagner starting uh, and this and that. Uh, I don't know the whole truth of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, how many times have we beat a dead horse with he needs to play, he needs to start the best five? Uh, I think, I think that if we come up with an approach, if Cal comes back and he comes up with the approach, like, look, I'm not here to make the kids happy, I'm here to win games. Now you chose our program, you signed the letter of intent. Let's let's get it going. Then I think we could do something, you know, because Calipari has done it. But, you know, you said things got to change this year. Let me put it this way: I, you know, I'm, I'm a season ticket holder. When we played Miami and they were eighth in the country, you know, it was a top ten matchup, and we beat them by thirty, and they were in the final four last year. Everybody in my section was like, "Hey, UK basketball's back. We're back." Come to find out, they lose like 16 games. Their net rankings like 260, terrible. Yeah. Uh, so that was a hoax. UK basketball wasn't back. We lose first round the SEC tournament, first round the NCAA tournament. It just you we can't the the emotions and and Big Blue is always there. We travel with whatever coach, whatever you know. We travel like we're there. I know they're, you know, it's just, it's rough. You know, I don't believe that there's going to be like, like I said earlier, the stands. I, I feel bad for them, and you know, including myself. This is my first year. I don't know what to expect moving forward. You know, the last five years has not been good to UK fans, U university. And it's like, it, what's, what's the 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 thing that sucks about it the most is is just you know I is how Cal communicates with his fans. He has to change the way he communicates with his fans. That's one thing he has to change. Yeah. You don't go in the presser and you don't say we got a great we got a great group coming coming in next year after you just lost their first with round group, game with a you, great group. Yeah, yeah, you just you just lost versus St. Peters and then you say, "Okay, we got these guys coming in and you lose again." Against Oakland, and then you say it again. We got I can't wait till next year. We got You can't say that to the fan base. You can't say that those things like that. And I think you know that communicating with the fans, you got to be able to communicate the right way to the Kentucky fans. Yeah, I'd, takeaways from the season, it, like I, like I said earlier, it's a broken record, man. Uh, I don't I don't think he. We obviously know if he comes back, he needs to fix things. But I don't th same way, same way he's going to do it. And I guess. You know, hope, hopefully next year's better. I guess. Good year, see. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a disappointment. <laughs> it's disappointment. We, we agreed last and week. He, he we... sets it up for that. I think Kyle sets it up for that. When he says, when he says, let's wait, wait. We're a March team built for March, and then you go in March and you, you lose, lose the first game. You set yourself up for you know what's coming for you. This is that's the, the thing. Yeah, the yeah. first time in years that every analyst on every platform had UK not winning it because a lot of people had UConn not winning it. 
but they had us in a title game. Mm-hmm. They had us in the Final Four. Mm-hmm. There was more team. people that had us in the Final Four than they did Elite Eight. Special team. Like we we were we were excited. Like every I mean, we had we had us winning the. I mean, I know it was Kentucky post game show, but realistically, as long as you know, I, I said as long as we win game one, yeah, just win one at a time. That didn't settle well, and just like I said, I hope hope next year's better. Yeah, and that's the thing too is uh, going through the season. We really thought the SEC was was pretty dominant in basketball, Jeez. but I don't think that was correct. You know, and that's something that we kind of looked at, is like say, "Hey, Kentucky is playing in a really good." It's talent uh, out there. Yeah, 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 no, definitely, definitely. But they're playing in a really good conference, and they weren't as good as we thought they were. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's another uh, point we brought up too. Was just uh, well, you know, they're they're built for March, and they're just getting ready for March, and they're not really worried about it. And like you said, that puts a lot of pressure. On the games in March and and the players as well. Yeah, that's these, a lot of these little them. teams. Mm-hmm. These little teams don't have anything to lose. Yeah, they don't. Mm-hmm. Like if they lose in the next round, but they beat Kentucky or they beat Tennessee, they don't care. And they done it. Like Jack Golke literally said, like I know they have a lot of NBA players. I can play with them. They play better than our NBA players. You know, I mean, it is what it is. I'm I'm done talking about it. I think we are too. So uh, we appreciate everybody watching uh, throughout the year. It's been a great up and down roller coaster year. Uh, still, go big blue. Uh, everything's everything's going to turn out great with that. So uh, again, please like, please subscribe. Uh, we'll be here for the updates and everything like that. But uh, we're still rocking with uh, we're still rocking the Kentucky blue. So.